In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a new tool called Shotcut Track. So this tool is very similar to the one I used previously called Peak Replay. It basically records the sessions and gives you some tracking options. But Shotcut Track is more of a specific tool that will help you understand your customers more so that you can make better business decisions. I am on the Shotcut Track website. This is roughly how it looks. We've got features, pricing, resources. It shows you here and real-time analytics. It gives you heat maps. This shows where the mouse is most of the time on a web page. Uh, you get to record and replay your visitor sessions as we did previously in the Peak Replay Shopify app. In short, these are some other things that can help you with. Set goals, share data, collaborate, data protection. So it says define each stage of work to see what's important and where things are getting stuck. Custom filters, and they also offer a seven day free trial. So Shotcut Track offers two types of tracking. The first type is lightweight tracking and the second type is advanced tracking. Let's take a look at these now. So lightweight tracking, pros, extremely lightweight tracking script, three kilobytes. So that won't slow your web page down. Very fast, GDPR, CCPA, PECR compliant. No tracking consent is needed as it doesn't store any personal identifiable information. Like it won't store information like card details. If someone searches something on a search bar, they type anything with a keyboard, it won't record those specific things. So cons, you can't associate a visitor with previous visits, so it doesn't build upon specific customers. Heat maps and session replays are not available. So that means if you want to be able to record the sessions of your visitors, lightweight tracking will not do that for you. You will need the advanced tracking. And then advanced tracking, the pros are visitor history. So it tracks the visitor as a whole. Every time they come back, it knows roughly that's that specific person and it will compile them. Heat maps and session replays ready, more available tracking statistics, associate custom parameters with visitors. The cons are it needs tracking consent. So you will need to get your customer or visitor to accept the cookie consent form. It needs more data to be sent depending on what modules are activated. So that depends on your uh, options that you select when you set it up. Now we're going to take a look at how to set it up. So what you want to do is go to websites on the side click add website, you select the name of your website. So for us, it would be carved culture or carved business. And then you would put the link to your website and choose which type of tracking you want. We either want lightweight or advanced. And then we can select the additional things that we want. So we probably want session replays. You might want this. I don't really care too much about this one. And then we obviously we put our link. So we go carveculture.com. It will come up here. And then we get this tracking code. And all we have to do is paste this into our website. So on Shopify, it's very easy to do. You can just go on to your online store, click customize, then you would add custom HTML. You would copy and paste this in, save, and that would just be done once on the home page, and then it's you know finished and ready to go. And from here, it will start tracking instantly. And so if we go to our dashboard, you can see the analytics here. It shows our page views, how many sessions, how many visitors. We can change the date. And of course you can track these analytics in your Shopify admin, or if you're with WordPress, you can track it there too. But this does a great job at compiling relevant information and it makes it much easier to find the specifics about your customer. So we can easily see how many page views we've got per day and we can track that and obviously change the date to see maybe all time. And all time means when you first started tracking the data so that we can see if it's going up, if it's going down. We can see the most popular pages, which is very helpful. If we want to create new blog posts, if we want to create new products, we can see which ones are performing well and then we can make more like those. Uh, referring domains, this tells us where our customers are coming from. If they're coming from Google, we might want to double down on our Google strategy. If they're coming from Facebook, we might want to create more social media posts on Facebook, that sort of thing. Countries shows us all of the countries that are in order of popularity, what countries are the most popular. So for us, it's United States, then Philippines, then United Kingdom. So when we're creating content, we should bear in mind that specific audience because you know they're the ones who are reading our blogs and, and looking at our products. So we need to think about them. So we've got operating system. It shows us what you know software the customers or visitors are using, what devices our visitors are using, we can see they're mainly using mobile. 
71%. Browsers, so we've got Google Chrome, Safari, Google Search, Edge, Samsung Internet. So obviously Google Chrome is the winner there. And it just helps us know our customers a bit better. These are referring domains as well. So we've got YouTube obviously is bringing in a lot of people. So we've got YouTube, Google, Shopify email, and then Instagram shopping. Screen resolution, not as relevant and the language that our visitors speak. This is helpful because obviously we might want to adjust our content for different languages. So here we can set goals. I haven't set any goals yet. Real time, so this is what's happening right now. We can see how many people are on our website, what pages they're looking at. It's quite useful. In comparison on the Shopify admin, it doesn't look as nice as that. Visitors here, we can see every single visitor there's 34,000 so there's 1377 pages i will not be going through all of those but if i want to you know find some data like we did on peak replay on the video we looked at the video replays and created sort of improvements to the website based on the visitors activity so we can click here and we can see what page what pages they clicked on what their sort of activity was and it tells us a lot more about the specific customer. We can delete the visitor if we want to. And if we move on, we can go to, I think this heat maps. So it's collecting data on the heat maps. And this right here shows us exactly what customers are clicking on. This is quite interesting. So from this, we can see like, okay, we've got featured products here. This tells us that, hey, look, this product is very popular and this product is very popular. Well, not as popular as this one, of course, but it is popular. It also tells us that customers prefer this one. So this one and this one hasn't got many clicks. So it might be worth swapping that out with something else. And it's the same for these collections. People are coming here and they're looking mainly at furniture and music instruments, not so much the gifts. We can see people clicking shop by room, uh, music instruments, clicking the homepage, clicking learn. But people are generally clicking all over the place as well. There's some in random spaces people even clicking on this. I wonder if we should make this into a shoppable image with you know products that pop up or something when they click on it. That might be cool. Customers are clicking on this, 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 not this one so much, it's quite interesting. If we come down, people are clicking on the new blog posts and they're even clicking on the currency to change the currency to their own currency, of course. So the heat maps is quite interesting. It gives you lots of data that, that could be quite useful. So my favorite feature is definitely the analytics, the heat maps, and the video replay 